you don't have to deal with multiple vendors. That's point number one. You don't have to call 10 people to handle 10 different kinds of waste. I'll handle all your waste, either directly or indirectly, but ensure it reaches the right test. So, Marwan, can you tell me a bit about yourself and uh, the journey so far of starting this initiative? Oh, that's a pretty small question for a long answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think an hour will be enough, but I'll try and cut it short as much as possible. Usually I tell people these are conversations we have over a drink. <laughs> so that the night goes longer. I am the co-founder of Hasiudala Innovations, uh, which started in 2015. Uh, we've just completed eight years uh, in November, on November 2nd, actually. So... It's been a crazy journey. Uh, the purpose of our social enterprise was primarily creating better livelihoods for waste pickers in Bangalore and uh, create opportunities where they can be integrated into the waste management system and also look at opportunities outside of waste, uh, but be a solution provider to people dealing with waste, uh, consult with governments, handling waste, and also look at other streams that can be complementing uh, in the waste management space. So that, that's the intent uh, of the organization. Um, prior to 2015, uh, before the social enterprise was born, we were a not-for-profit. Um, it was an organization, uh, Hashi Rudala, the not-for-profit that started in 2013. And uh, the primary focus then was to bring in recognition for the waste pickers of Bangalore. Um, now, waste pickers, if you're wondering who they are, they are not the people who are working with the government and doing collection door to door or coming in vehicles and collecting waste from uh, houses. Uh, they are not the ones who are employed by the municipality or the government. But these are the people who you would have noticed with, you know, carrying uh, bags on their shoulder, white bags on their shoulder, or, or cycling uh, on a tricycle with a huge bag at the back and collecting waste, stopping on the street corners or anywhere where there's trash on the streets and pick up all the waste that has value. And that's how they earn a living. The government had no clue such communities exist when we reached out to them and said, that, you know, there is a community like waste pickers and why isn't there any recognition or any kind of social security benefits that are going to them. Um, and the obvious response uh, that we received is, who are waste pickers? And we were surprised, like, how do you respond to a question like, question like that? And then we said, just by conversing with them will not make sense, but let's come back with some data. So we estimated about 30 to 45,000 waste pickers in Bangalore back then, this is 2013. And uh, we did a study of about 15,000 waste pickers in Bangalore. And uh, the study uh, shared data where there is about 1,050 tons of waste diverted from the landfills by these 15,000 waste pickers. And they are saving the municipality 84 crores annually. So this is a published paper which I was a part of among uh, my other colleagues. Uh, and uh, we went back to the government and uh, told them that, you know, see, these are who are waste pickers. They are saving your money and you have no idea about them. And that's when um, uh, the municipality of Bangalore, the BBMP, was the first municipality in the country that uh, provided work-based ID cards to waste pickers. This is the first in the country that a municipality has issued a work-based ID card to waste pickers and that set a precedent for the rest of the country to follow. Now, with uh, Hasmudala, the not-for-profit's intervention, all the laws dealing with waste speaks of waste pickers integration, speaks of waste picker recognition, speaks of waste picker identity, and speaks of first preference to waste pickers when it comes to waste. So what we started doing is uh, integrating the waste pickers of the city in the decentralized model that the city was introducing. Again, the first in the country where a city was thinking of decentralizing waste management while the rest of the country is centralizing waste management. 
as a process that has been fo being followed for decades. Uh, when I say centralized waste management, it is primarily just doing the collection from every household and taking it outside the city or the um, municipal area and dumping it somewhere in the rural areas. That was the process that was followed then and even now in many parts of the country. Um, what was introduced back then by other advocacy organizations and us was decentralized waste management where we said that you need the city needs to develop recycling centers within each ward so that the waste gets managed within the ward. So you have decentralized composting or biogas, you have a dry waste or an MRF material recovery facility uh, within wards so that waste does not need to get transported away. And we, we, we proved to them that decentralizing the entire waste management system will help save a lot of money for the municipality. And uh, in fact, I uh, operated the first dry waste collection center in Bangalore even before it became a concept um, to prove to the municipality that, you know, decentralized uh, dry waste collection facilities help the ward and there are benefits in managing waste within the ward. So a colleague uh, of mine and I, both of us, put our own money and uh, operated the dry waste collection center for, for over a year year, year and a half, and then demonstrated to the municipality that this is the way to go. And that's when today we have over 170 drivers collection centers in Bangalore. So I had no technical training in waste, but hands-on training, and that's how I got into it. Um, and the key reason why I actually got into it even before 2013 was I ventured into the community space through a community radio station um, in 2009, which gave me an opportunity to mingle and uh, get exposed to communities outside my circle. So I didn't know such communities existed. I was uh, too caught up in my own bubble. So um, I got introduced to communities like the auto driver community, the transgender community, the sex, uh, sexual minorities, the, uh, you know, people working as sex workers, uh, children, uh, people, who are, uh, NGOs and organizations working with children, with senior citizens, with animals, domestic workers, waste pickers. And uh, I took a, a, a liking towards uh, street dogs as one of my projects and um, started creating a program with the municipality because back then we used to have a lot of dog bite cases. So rather than going on a killing spree, uh, which the law does not permit, um, we suggested that the birth control measures had to grow, grow stronger. And along with that, uh, one of the key areas of the study was um, a lot of human animal conflict was around waste. So you'd find waste on the streets, people walking past it to throw waste there. You'll find animals feeding there from dogs, crows, cows, uh, and other birds. Um, and you'd see waste pickers going and picking waste from there. So there's a lot of engagement happening around waste. So trying to solve the problem of street dogs, I realized this is one of the key factors, which is solving the waste problem of the city. And here I am today, full leader. <laughs> part of an organization that is trying to make a difference and bring in sustainable solutions for the city of Bangalore and other cities to follow. Uh, great. I think there are uh, multiple areas of your life telling you to solve the problem uh, yeah. of waste management. So Marwan, uh, I have two questions for you. Number one, you talk about uh, for purpose and not for loss organization. Yeah. Can you elaborate more on that? Um, this is actually, uh, coined by my other co-founder, uh, who, uh, who very creatively, uh, Shekhar, who's the other co-founder, who very creatively brought this on saying, you know, we, we have to be driven for a purpose, you know, we have to be driven every step we take, uh, should be driven for a purpose. And our purpose is to bring a better quality of life for the waste makers. And uh, with a slight twist of not calling us a for-profit, we call ourselves a not-for-loss. So that was very strategically <laughs> put in there to make it a little more interesting than the usual. 
that was the whole idea behind that yeah i i think uh, that makes a lot of sense because uh, when you say for purpose like you are inclined towards solving a problem and yeah. for loss is making that your business is sustainable correct so i think that's a very smart move uh, to put in there and yeah. probably i think this can be a model to lot of organizations to put correct. in mission statement as well you know being in a social enterprise unless you think about sustainability and viability it's very hard to sustain when you go back to a, a not for profit and uh, and depend on grants and projects and try and try and make a difference but we're trying to um bring in change as a social enterprise where i could confidently say that we are the only ones that are directly impacting waste pickers in the city today as a social enterprise and it was like very surprising for me to know that government had no idea again your volume is very low yes sir hello i know something wrong with the mic i guess yeah yeah is it better now yeah what's wrong oh. yeah yeah i think there is something wrong with zoom um like i was very surprised to know that like you know uh, waste pickers are not like formally as in identified as a mm-hmm. as a community because from childhood like the notion is ki, okay there must be some or the other association with municipality or the government and they might be like uh, you know like knowing that they are collecting waste and they have some formal association so mm-hmm. okay so is, you have started doing this in bangalore and like other cities in india also don't have any um, like the identification as you are establishing uh, for the waste picker am i correct in assuming that uh, so see here i don't know if you can see i want to show everybody can you see this yep we can can you yeah. see this? Yeah. yes we can so that is the id card issued by the municipality of bangalore to waste pickers uh, and um, from the time that bangalore started it the rest of the country has followed we have all cities uh, recognizing waste pickers in uh, where they are present whether in panchayat level or municipality level and uh, there are a lot of organizations such as the not for profit hasil gala that works with uh, waste pickers uh, across the country and uh, they form a larger network of organizations working with waste pickers and call themselves the alliance of indian waste pickers and they represent the country of india in uh, you know international domain so there is recognition to waste pickers coming in and there are a lot of changes that are coming in for the benefit of the waste pickers and uh, you know i see a lot of changes since then and now um marwan there is a common notion that you know waste pickers are people who are like from marginalized community and they just pick up random waste <clears throat> from uh, the streets yeah. but can you like highlight what are the you know main characteristics of this waste pickers because from what i understand like they have a tremendous knowledge of plastic you know mm-hmm. so uh like what is the segregation level of plastics and it might seem that just as picking up the waste but when they're picking up they are more selective about where yeah. what they can where to pick so what has been your experience See, with these people and uh, yeah we are to you know to to uh, term them aptly i would say they're entrepreneurs in their own sense you know they wake up when they want to they collect waste uh, and like you said they pick up things that uh, have uh, of a certain type and they do that because that certain type of plastic or paper is the only one that has value unfortunately not all packaged uh, materials that come out in the in the world today or in the country today or in the city today is recyclable so they only collect waste that has value and for good reasons because that's their only source of income now the amount of time they spend the amount of time they uh, they spend collecting waste and uh, selling it to a recycler or a scrap shop that's the amount of energy that they invest and survive on that day so it's a daily income sort of effort that needs to be put in and they are so enterprising and that's why we realized that when we started our services in bangalore 
we didn't want to create an employer employee relationship because that's not something that they would understand and be comfortable working with and so that's why all our services are a more partnership a collaborative approach so all our service models make sure that we treat them equally and that's a um uh, that's a personality that we kind of transfer among the entire organization that you know we don't, they don't work for us we work for them you know and that, that that's how we uh, we have our uh, policies within the organization um ensuring that today we are here with everyone who are at HDI is only because of the waste picker who is putting in that effort every day by going door to door and collecting waste or by stepping in one event and ensuring the event goes sustainable or collecting the type of waste material that reaches brands uh, and replacing virgin plastic. So, yeah, I would happily say that I'm their employee rather than their mine. Because they are also, they have been in a habit of not being formally associated with organizations or government. Like, what were the like challenges in bringing them on board? Like, if, if there were any uh, challenges oh, you faced? There, there definitely was. So, in the not-for-profit, uh, so I was part of the not-for-profit before Hasudala Innovation started. So, I have a fair bit of idea of how it was back then. And just like any other engagement, the most crucial thing when you're engaging with a community or an individual is building trust. And that's something that doesn't come easy. All of us have experienced that. If you want to trust someone, you need to see why they're coming to you or why you're going to them. And uh, we made it very sure and very clear to them that our engagement is not to uh, try and be a benefactor where we feel almighty that we have all the knowledge, power, and money to help you, but rather bring in more clarity of what's available in the city today, with the government today, and how you can gain access to it because you are contributing to the city today. And we, we just cleared, facilitated this entire knowledge transfer and uh, express to them that there are a lot of benefits that the government has which you're not availing and you're not availing because of lack of awareness and fear of engaging because some uh, there might be some who are locals there are some who are migrants from different cities but you still live in that city and contributing to that city which is a huge um, you know benefit to them so it took us over a year to gain their trust and it was it took a year of constant engagement that we are not affiliated to any political party we are not affiliated to any uh, scheme uh, you know any private interest personal interest we are just trying to uh, make sure that you know you guys get the waste because get the benefit that the government owes you you know, so create that platform where they can have access to all the social security benefits. So, yeah, it took us a year long time and then slowly they, they realized that, you know, we're not going to <laughs> uh, stop coming. We are not going to be aggressive. We're going to, we're going to engage with love and respect. And uh, eventually we were confident that they would see through and uh, gain our trust and uh, we're here today um, you know with the not-for-profit uh, spread across multiple cities in Karnataka not only Bangalore and through the through their support we are able to engage with these speakers in other city and offer similar services there as well yeah okay so like um, to give us a better idea like can you walk us through how does like let's say a way speaker uh, associates with Hasir with Dada and how does that like journey move like what do they do with with the organization on day-to-day -day basis and how's that flow for them uh, work okay I, I have to make something evidently clear that one is the not-for-profit is a separate organization uh, Hasir with Dada 
and my social enterprise, which is Sashivdala Innovations, is a separate organization. While we are related, related in terms of having the vision of bringing a better quality of life for waste papers, with only that similarity in place, everything else in terms of offices, in terms of our operations, in terms of our expertise, we are two separate organizations. So uh, the not-for-profit is the key organization that engages with the waste pickers. Uh, and when I mean engagement is they have coordinators uh, for each part of the city who engages with all the communities that are residing uh, in the city. And they host monthly meetings, ensuring that any developments, any decisions, any uh, progress that they need to make as an organization uh, is discussed so that all community uh, all community members are in alignment with the decisions that are taken. And when it comes to um, any kind of projects, any kind of uh, engagement that needs to be done, it's all consulted with the waste pickers and taken forward in the not-for-profit. When it comes to so, comes to Hasudala Innovations, we operate in a very uh, structured manner. Uh, we operate in a very, uh, how do you say, uh, like a private limited company, but you, you won't feel like a private limited company here and uh, within the organization because we kind of feel like we're all closer, like family, you know, with everyone. So we're always very close knit. Everybody is there for everyone here. And um, there's no, while we have labels as co founders and managers and supervisors, everybody has access to everyone. There's no uh, limitation to anybody reaching out to anyone for any um, any support or any escalations. So that's one thing we've always maintained. So what we have created is business models where we offer services uh, to waste generators in Bangalore. Uh, we have three main services, which is the total waste man uh, total waste management service, which is services to bulk waste generators. Uh, a bulk waste generator is defined as someone who uh, generates about 100 kgs of waste a day. Um, and uh, we have the permission from the municipality to offer services. We were, in fact, one of the first and panel vendors for Bangalore. And we're servicing a little over 300 uh, bulk, waste generator, bulk waste generators and uh, handling close to about 45 tons of waste per day. We run our own biogas facility in collaboration with Carbon Masters uh, and call the Joint Venture Sustainable Impacts, where we are the only organization that has set up a biogas facility in a private industrial area without any government support. Uh, and the only organization that has a 30-ton biogas plant running in the whole state of Karnataka, operational today. And uh, we are the only ones who are bottling it uh, and replacing LPG in restaurants. So all the waste that is collected on a daily basis goes to our biogas facilities, converted to bio CNG, bottled and then uh, sent to restaurants who are using it as uh, fuel and uh, benefiting from the biogas. And um, the rest of the waste, uh, which is the recyclable waste, goes to the recycler, uh, to the waste pickers. Now, we, again, I, uh, we are the only organization in the country today that is not retrieving any value from the dry waste, any recyclable waste which has value. The entire value is transferred to the waste workers because we know that the value of that waste is what they have originally uh, charted out to work with and make sure that they get the benefit. And... Uh, we wanted to continue with that. We didn't want to take away that from them. And uh, the second service is uh, events waste management service, which is uh, any event, be it a wedding, music festival, sporting event, a birthday celebration, a naming ceremony, anything that you can think of, anywhere from a 10-member celebration to over a lakh. We've handled events of those scales and um, ensured that the event goes sustainable. So we do consultation and uh, offer our services, making sure you comply with the waste management rules. 
and uh, ensure that all the waste generated at that event goes to a recycling destination. So we've been able to achieve zero waste to landfill at events. And a lot of uh, brands, sponsors, clients, organizers are very keen on making sure that all their events um, go sustainable. So that's how we've been able to offer this uh, service in multiple cities, not only in Bangalore. We are also present in Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, and Hyderabad, Chennai as well. Um, the third one is our plastic aggregation, which is uh, primarily working with brands to uh, use recycled plastic rather than uh, virgin plastic. So we work with uh, brands like H&M and Cofresco. Uh, with H&M, we uh, uh, get them to use our recycled plastic and they make buttons. So all the apparel for men, women, and children, uh, the buttons is made from recycled plastic that is from Hashidala Innovations. And we work with brands like Cofresco where they make cling films and the garbage liners, which is exported out of the country and not here. So all our uh, LDP, uh, like milk covers, uh, is recycled and sent to them for, uh, it's collected and sent to them and they recycle it uh, to make cling films and garbage liners. So these are the three main verticals that we have. Um, and all our uh, engagement is either through waste pickers or purchasing all these materials from waste pickers and of course other aggregators. So, uh, Marwan, can you help me understand if I am a bulk waste creator, my society has, let's say, 5,000 homes. Yeah. They are generating more than 500 kgs a day. Mm -hmm. How does Hasiruddala help me? What is your mm -hmm. model? Where, where do waste from my home start? Mm -hmm. and where does it end into your okay. bathroom? Yeah. So, what we try and offer is an end to end solution. Um, so, we want to be a one stop shop solution for all municipal waste. Uh, what we are authorized to collect, we will collect. What we are not authorized to collect also, we will facilitate to the legal entity, partner organizations, and make sure that you don't have to deal with multiple vendors. That's point number one. You don't have to call 10 people to handle 10 different kinds of waste. I'll handle all your waste, either directly or indirectly, but ensure it reaches the right destination and charge you accordingly for it. So every bulk waste generator if they are aware of segregation at source, then it makes uh, you know the process easier. If they don't know or, or, or if they're not following segregation at source, because our entire service depends on segregation. So if you don't segregate, we cannot offer our services. So we help you streamline that process. So we do consultation, we do trainings for residents, for the housekeeping, security. We ensure that we give this training to them before we start our services, streamline the entire process with their existing vendor. Now, once uh, this process is streamlined, then we start our services, making sure that the organic waste and the uh, uh, reject waste that gets generated is collected on a daily basis. And your recyclable waste is collected once or twice a week, depending on how much quantity it can be on a daily basis as well. And all this waste is sent to its respective destinations and we create an impact report that we share with the clients, bulk waste generators on what has been their impact of the waste generated and how it has impacted their environment and we share this information with them. Now, the beauty of this service is we've created a unique business model where, you know, we charge the client as per the quantity of waste they generate. So that's what they find interesting. And uh, we weigh the waste on a daily basis and we make sure that um, it is confirmed by one of their personnel, either security or housekeeping staff to confirm the quantities. We've digitized the entire process. And uh, at the end of the day, the invoice that they receive is also showing them how much of uh, waste that they're generating and what is their segregation for, uh, uh, how do you say, optimi uh, optimization. So we, uh, through the invoicing, we try and uh, express to them that segregation is the key. So the lower, uh, I mean, the higher your segregation levels are, your invoice value will be lower. And the lower waste gener you generate, the lower billing you'll have. So it also encourages them to segregate better. It also encourages them to generate less waste. But uh, Marwan, can you, uh, so do you also provide trainings to them on how to segregate the waste or is yes. it their yes. responsibility? 
No, no, we we do help them. It's it's part of the service. Uh, we provide training to the households. We provide training to the housekeeping. We provide training to the security because we want to make sure that everybody is aware of the entire process. And we want the we want to streamline it because that's what the law says. And that's the best way of handling waste. You cannot handle mixed waste. It's just not possible. So unless you segregate waste at source, you cannot retrieve uh, its recycling capacity and you cannot manage it. So and how does it the entire process. And how does an ordinary training look like? Like so depending on the audience, whether it's the residents or whether it's the housekeeping team, depending on the language that they're comfortable with. We have a PowerPoint and a video uh, training session and a live demonstration. Now, you would get total waste, what you would generate in a general ordinary household. And we do like a quiz with them, like which waste goes where. And you know, kind of like a practical experience for them to understand what happens with waste. And that's a good way of learning. It's more, how do you say, retaining when you do a practical training. And also in, 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 in the initial stages of the service, of course, not everybody finds it easy to segregate if they have no experience. So if we find fault in their garbage disposal system, we go back to them and train them again on the spot saying, see, what you've given today is mixed. This is how you need to segregate and continue following this process. So it's it takes about a month uh, minimum to get everybody streamlined in the process. Yeah. If they're not already aware. Makes sense. Yeah. I think this is the key aspect that uh, many of the organization and people fail to understand that, you know, if you are not going to segregate your waste at the source, mm -hmm. when it goes to bulk, it is going to be an impossible task for someone to come in and do it. Yeah. Let's say as an example, if you put a chutney in a transparent bag, polythene, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, if it gets spilled over, the yeah. paper and everything else gets spoiled. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be like an no, not a, no process can like kind of retrieve that. Perfect. Right. So let's say, okay, so once you do the training, the society starts segregating the waste. Yeah. You collect, you give them a report that this yeah. is your waste collection. This is how much we are getting into. Then what's next? And can you also highlight on what is like authorized to take and what is not authorized to take by you? And how okay. do you manage via a partner organization? Okay. Now, uh, once we have given the training and once we start our services, we streamline the operation timelines in terms of what time we do the collection, whether it's door-to-door -door or centralized collection. Door-to-door -door means our staff goes and collects the waste from every individual household at the door. If it's centralized collection, then the bulk waste generator has an in-house housekeeping team already who is doing the door-to-door -door collection and they collect it at one location and then we go and collect it. Uh, from there. So technically under the municipal solid waste, you have your organic waste, which is your food waste and leftover uh, vegetable waste and everything, veg, non-veg. Then you have your paper plastic metal glass, which falls under the dry waste, recyclable, non-recyclable category. And then you have your sanitary and reject waste. Now, as per uh, the guidelines, the sanitary waste is supposed to be, uh, cannot be collected by uh, the vendor. It has to be collected by a biomedical waste agency or a uh, sanitary pad recycler, for example. We have uh, pad care that has come in that is providing uh, recycling uh, solutions for used sanitary pads. So that's the first of its kind that's come in the country today, the world, in fact. So we partnered with them in offering the services of recycling sanitary pads. Um, so uh, so your organic waste, your dry waste, your landfill waste uh, is something that we can offer the collection with. Electronic waste, again, um, since you're not, if you're a recycler, then you can collect it. If you're not a recycler, you tie up with the recycler and make sure it reaches the recycler. And uh, garden waste is something that also we offer services because we work with farmers and compost in farmland. So all that goes to farming and goes back into nature. So that's largely uh, all the waste that gets generated. You have stuff like construction demolition waste that comes in. Uh, again, not authorized to collect it because we don't have a recycling destination for it. So we partner with recyclers and make sure that it reaches there. If there's no recycler present, then they have to reach out to the municipality and make sure that they, they collect that waste. So that's about it. 
And, and do you have like uh, some facility where the waste is stored or is it like right from the collection? From there only it like goes to different like... Uh, uh, so, so we have two stages in our collection and transportation. One is the primary collection, which is all our waste because we've, uh, we've coined this way a waste picker franchise unit. So basically it's our waste pickers who, who go and do the primary collection. So uh, these waste pickers are basically a team of four to five people. Uh, uh, two or three of them will go as uh, the primary collection and the remaining stay back at their either go down sort of facility where they segregate the waste. Now the primary collection is done by our waste pickers and we are the only ones who uh, hired a private land where we do transfer of waste from primary vehicle to a secondary vehicle. Otherwise, you would notice everybody doing this on the streets. Uh, so we are the only ones who have hired a separate uh, private land and we do this transfer from primary, which is a smaller vehicle, to a bigger vehicle. Now, the bigger vehicles are the ones that reach the destination. So the organic waste uh, on a daily basis goes to the biogas facility. The recyclable waste goes to either the material recovery facility or a waste picker go downs where it's further segregated and set for recycling. The ones that are non-recyclable is stored there and we work with cement cleans and send it for incineration to cement cleans that we are tied up with. And uh, anything that uh, needs to reach the landfill goes to a private uh, authorized land. So that's the process that we follow. Awesome. Yeah, I have I have seen a lot of times that collection on the street and it's it's very messy. Like, yeah, always wonder like there should be enough space for yeah. that collection. So what we are trying to do is demonstrate to the municipality that if you put in the right amount of money and the right amount of technology and process, you can make it very professional. But unfortunately, they're taking some time to understand and listen. So while they take that time, we will continue demonstrating to them. In fact, we are working with uh, we are we are offering our services in ten villages outside of Bangalore uh, with our partners, uh, the Anonymous Indian Trust, and uh, it's called the EcoGram Project. So it's a uh, it's one gram panchayat that uh, handles about ten villages, and we do a daily collection of waste there. And they have built a facility there that handles the waste. So we've been able to demonstrate. In a in an entire gram panchayat, that if you offer professional services, people are willing to comply. <clears throat> in in the city of Bangalore, we are demonstrating what means uh, what circular economy means. We're collecting organic waste from the residences, converting into biogas, and sending it back into the city to get consumed, replacing LPG. So, diverting all natural uh, organic waste and converting it into fuel and creating clean energy for them to use rather than fossil fuel. So what, what we are positioning ourselves as uh, our experts in the field of waste management, experts in the field of operations, of uh, handling waste, and also demonstrating as experts in the field of creating circular economy solutions. I think that's, that's very much required considering how widely India is like growing in yeah. all the the front a lot of waste being generated uh, awesome so i i i wanted to understand um, like highlight more around uh, the aspect that generally people can don't have idea around how the finance of these things work out right like if if let's say if they see okay this is a waste, waste segregation or a waste management company like it doesn't actually spark how exactly they will survive or how exactly they are, they will be managing and scaling so like, what are the areas where uh, Hasirudallah Innovation like gets the profit and like kind of so that they can keep scaling um, the operations on day-to-day -day basis? So I would say that anything that we start with, we want to make sure that we have a clear business plan in place. Um, and uh, if, if we are investing the money ourselves or raise money for it, and uh, Optimize along the way, making sure that it it uh, follows the projections that we have created, and if not, uh, you know, make the necessary changes. But eventually, uh, you know, reach a point where you move from break even to start uh, becoming profitable. 
and uh, we've been able to demonstrate that as a as an organization when we started in 2015 that we were a bit of positive in one and uh, one and a half years so which showed our investors that you know we are on the right track and we are demonstrating that we want to be profitable and uh, making sure that we are able to create opportunities for uh, our uh, beneficiaries, which is the waste pickers. You spoke about, uh, you know, that whatever the waste you generate, you pay accordingly, right? So yes. in this space, uh, there are many organizations, there are many non-profits working, uh, you know, currently to make sure that every household segregates and then they kind of give it to a responsible vendor partner and then it responsibilities to the end destination. So Marwan, can you like spot in what are your USPs when you talk to this bulk generators? Like, is there a compliance that forced them to, okay, I have to like manage my waste or is there genuine benefit that they see by associating with services like yours? Yeah, so one is definitely compliance because uh... Uh, at least in Bangalore, uh, we know that the municipality does not have the capacity to handle all waste. Uh, so that's why the entire uh, policy on dividing the city into regular waste generators and bulk waste generators came into place. And then secondly, it's also about reliability. I think one of the key factors that worked for us is they were we were reliable to our clients to make sure that we will come in every day. Um, that was one thing that that was always worrying all our clients and even the ones who have left us because were, because uh, for for any for somebody offering a cheaper price and they came back to us because they know that we are reliable to give you an example of reliability we are the only ones during covid time during both lockdowns that we offered services we never shut down services so our waste pickers our supervisors our entire operations team even today, I, I confidently say I'm so grateful to them that, you know, they said we will continue services because we have promised our customers that we will give, we are, we are, we are hundred percent reliable. We have a 99% operational efficiency in making sure that our vehicles reach every day. We are the only ones who run a, a, a nine to a six a customer care helpline dedicated for our entire operations where a customer can reach out to us if they, if they're facing any trouble or we reach out to them if there's any delays or um, you know any changes in that day's operational plan. So we we are always transparent with our customers. We are always engaged with the customers, making sure that you know they know that we are focused on what we are doing, and it's just not something that we say and not following through. Yeah, and that kind of brings me to a next question, which is on an average, what would be the amount of waste that you collect, process, and how many households or how many bulk uh, waste generators do you cater to? So we are catering a little over 300 uh, bulk waste generators, which is roughly close to about 34,000 households uh, today. Um, and... Uh, an average Indian household of four generates about roughly between one to one and a half kg. Again, after COVID, things have changed because this work from home has made people generate more waste at home. So the the uh, the numbers vary from anywhere between one to three kgs a day, depending on the size of the family. If you're working from home, then you're generating more waste. And if you're not, then your average is about one to one and a half kgs a day. So yeah, so we are we are managing about a total of uh, thirty to thirty five tons per day uh, total waste. That uh, yeah, I think COVID has made some changes in our lifestyle that are like not yeah. very positive. But uh, so like I wanted to understand, you know, what does a day to day uh, like a, a normal day in, in the company looks like for you or the team like you know we all have ideas about IT companies and all other things but I think more people need to understand how uh, the companies in sustainability space are operating so if you can highlight like what a day-to-day -day operation for you like feels like in office so each of the departments like I said the total waste management the events waste management and uh the plastic aggregation are all separate departments with their own separate uh, verticals uh, 
heads, vertical heads. Uh, and uh, it's like any other organization. I'm guessing we have our WhatsApp groups where our regular conversation happens. Then there are phone calls come in uh, every day, uh, making sure that everything is uh, falling into place. The operations team has, has their own communication line through WhatsApp and phone calls that go in. And uh, what I try and do every day is make sure everything is running smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> talking to everybody and secondly trying to see how we can create more opportunities engage with either the municipality government or uh, other stakeholders clients and try and grow the business at the same time yeah how how is that response like in general is around from like let's say government or public in, in this many years like how do you see is it is it moving on a positive note so we've um, so we're just applying uh, for our empanelment in Gurgaon, you know, so we'll soon hopefully crossing fingers that we will start offering services in Gurgaon. And uh, one of the criteria for the application is uh, how many bulk mail generators have you serviced uh, for a long period of time? And I was looking through there, only asked for five, and I could give them easily 10 and above who have been with us uh, since, uh, you know, the last six, seven, eight years. I mean, just on the application form, but I'm sure there are many more who've been with us. So what, what I was reminded of is we still have customers who've been with us from day one. And uh, every time we visit them for one or the other reason or for any kind of engagement or any new process, new opportunity, new business that we've started, we always go back to our existing customers and do a trial with them to see how the feedback is. And it's so nice to hear from them saying that, to see that satisfaction in their, uh, you know, faces that, you know, we promise to them reliable professional services and we continue to deliver that in eight years now. You know, so it's kind of a happy feeling. What is the scale of uh, Bangalore waste management in general? Number one. Number two, how are you planning to scale? So as you said, like you are planning to go to Gurgaon, right? Yeah. But what is like, uh, you know, 10 years down the line, Hasir Dalai looks like? Um, we have this saying in the, within us founders that, you know, we, we don't want to be, um, we don't want to be doing the same thing what we are 10 years from now. Um, I would uh, have the waste picker community managing the entire operations. We want to see the waste pickers who are part of the company who are actually sitting on the board. Uh, because we have like uh, transformational changes from the waste picker community. Like we have uh, waste pickers who are working with us who are GST registered, they're filing GST, which is never heard of in the country. We have them who are running facilities from a street roaming, waste picking, uh, individual collecting waste and making money. Now he runs a material recovery facility. So we've shown that growth uh, to the waste picker community and they have. Um, trusted us in that growth strategy and followed and seen that they can also grow uh, for themselves. And at the same time, I think what I would say is 10 years from now, I would want to be known as the leading uh, experts in waste management and consulting with governments and bringing in solutions and setting processes where the city manages the waste efficiently, be it technology or be it operations. You know, making sure we streamline things because it is possible and we're demonstrating it right now. You need that kind of money. You need that kind of strategy. You need that kind of processes to be set in place. Otherwise, we'll continue to be doing the same thing what we are and organizations like us will be, you know, in, in silos working and showing things and showing uh, uh, professional services where they don't grow. So we're trying to enter into the government, trying to... How do you say engage with the government and say that there are models available, there are processes that is currently in place. We have different, different um, government uh, representatives from different states who come and visit a biogas facility because they've never heard of a biogas facility that is being bottled and sent as a replacement for LPG. So we've had different uh, state representatives come visit, but there is a reluctance uh, for all of them because everybody wants a quick fix solution and what we're trying to demonstrate to them it's not a one day's job you can't transform 
uh, what has been what you've been following for decades in one one month, six months, one year. It's going to take some time, and you need to invest that kind of time. You need to invest that kind of money. It does not come with your lowest bid. You know it, it, that that entire tendering process is something that's always going to be faulty because the lowest uh, bidder is the one who is going to uh, get the tender, and he may he or she may not be providing the right technology, right process. It's a flawed system. So we're trying to change all that. Yeah, I think I think because of that, for a long time, a lot of people yeah have not been able to develop the trust in this entire system. Like if you take people from let's say our friend circle or like they have a very vague notion of you know like Achha, we can't trust it. We're not sure everything is done properly. We still keep seeing waste. So. It, it's great to see like companies like Hasirudalla Innovations are kind of breaking the dogma um, yeah. set the general public. Yeah, and also uh, since this is a new industry, I would say in general compared to what other industries have grown to, I think uh, what many of so the people that we have talked to fail to understand in general in our peers is that these things take time to build up, you know, uh, like if you work in IT, you have 10 people and you put 10 computers and they will produce like, uh, you know, <laughs> millions, right. But when it comes to breaking solutions on ground, I think yeah. it requires real consistent efforts. Yeah. And it is like empowering to know that few of the customers that you started out with are still with you. Yeah. And that shows the consistency of work that you have services that you have been able to provide to them yeah as well as gaining new uh people in yeah one more question that i have is like tell us uh you know something about the learnings that you have gathered from the day one till now mm -hmm. like who was uh marwan on day one with hasrudala innovations yeah. and who is he right now uh, with all those years past <laughs> I think if you go back to you, you if you go back to my uh, history, you will see the fade on my head going lower and lower and lower. <laughs> but apart from that, I think it's it's always been a learning journey. You know the it, it's something so satisfying. And I want to give that satisfaction an example, you know. You go to a government office, you're meeting anybody in the, in the government, be it the minister, be it the officer. You're waiting for them. There's nobody who's bothering about who you are, what you are. And you need to go there, make sure you get your job done and leave. But when you go to a waste paper community's home, they treat you with so much respect. They start offering you things, even if they are a community that does not earn that much of money on a daily basis. You know, they offer you something to eat, to drink, so respectful. It, it just gives me that, uh, you know, satisfaction that I, as an individual and through the organization, we're trying to make that and bring that difference in this community that is being so respectful. To see somebody from the waste picker community go from free roaming street scavenging waste picking to somebody who's running a facility, seeing that transformation and see that uh, humongous growth in their family, in their income. We even had a third party uh, study done which showed that a waste, the waste pickers working with us at 122% uh, income increase from before and from when they worked with us. So th these studies prove that, you know, we are going the right direction. And there's one thing that always keeps us going and that's always worked in our favor is anytime we are down between us co-founders, always tell each other that the universe is there conspiring, making sure that we go on the right track. And if there's any a dull day or any uh, difficult time, just smile and move on because we have our hearts in the right place and the universe will work in your favor. 
and it's come through so far eight years and i hope it continues to do so um, so yeah we are hoping for many more years to come yeah that that's actually uh, very important especially given the sustainability field where uh, the like the motivation otherwise set up in other industry financial motivation is anyways a challenge for any company to kind of crack it yeah. so yeah having heart in the right places i think lot of founders we have talked with uh, this is a very common thing we are mm. grateful to see that mm. everyone in like the tough times rely on this principle okay we are here to do the right thing mm. the other things will always follow if we continue doing that yeah awesome uh, and how how like uh, sorry if we are stretching a little bit uh, more on the time no. but yeah how is the team building going? like like i'm just curious to know how is the interest from let's say young folks to work with such companies in this this type of sectors hmm. how is it shaping up that's always a very dicey situation uh, being in the social sector being a uh, how do you say an organization working uh, with community driven purpose um we see a lot of uh, people from uh, the corporate world who want to get into the space because they've they're tired of running like a treadmill and you know operating 9 to 5 or 24 hours making all that money and not having the satisfaction of their existence and we've had a lot of uh, employees here who moved from the uh, corporate sector and want to work in the space because making a difference in people's lives give them that satisfaction which i just recently said um so we've had people like that people who work in our organization come with some kind of passion um that they want to try and make a difference either to the environment or to the community and in whichever uh, area that you're going to focus on you're benefiting the other so if you're focusing on environment as something that gives you satisfaction you're helping the community if you're focusing on the community you're automatically helping the environment so that's the kind of uh, uh juggling that happens here and it's very evident what i've seen over these years is anybody who is coming in just to do a 9 to 5 don't stay too long they don't stay too long because that's that's very visible evident and that's not what we are looking for this this there's a dearth of good uh, uh, empathetic and compassionate people in the space uh, and uh, we've had remarkable turnarounds with some interns so we've had interns who converted to you know employees here and we see that trend and uh, there is a lot of interest in this space and there is also at the same time a lot of dearth because interest may not necessarily convert to uh, you know talent so there's always uh, openings and there's always uh, in a need for good uh, good staff depending on their skill set you know and uh, i'm sure if anybody listening in uh, if you have any interest in bangalore do reach out to us in the environment space and i'm sure something we, we can work something out yeah i i think that's a right message that you have given out that uh just in order to get a job this industry won't make you uh sustainable over a long time yeah. i think what you need to be focused in if if it's your heart is at the right place like do you yeah. want to really to do this i think that's the first question yeah. so you should ask because as the industry is evolving i understand that everything that is needed to get job done is in your job profile <laughs> yeah in this particular segment and there is more to skill its context you need to yeah. be connected with uh the problem that you are solving you know yeah. you might be a skillful marketer or a designer or an operator but yeah. if you are not able to connect with the problem then you won't be able to apply your skill set into solving it yeah. so i think that's a, a tremendous piece of insight that you have given us that many people fail to understand yeah also marwan couple of questions to bring it to the end number one is what are the sustainable practices that you follow in your day to day life um simple things carry your own bottle try and avoid using disposables as far as possible um 
fan compost at home if you can. Um, at least the simplest thing that you can do is reach out to organizations or service providers who offer uh, solutions to help the environment. You know, I think if you're not able to do anything yourself, either support an organization and contribute to that organization in terms of bringing in that kind of service to your community so that you transfer that responsibility to somebody else if you're not able to do it yourself. And uh, yeah, if, if you're living a less disposable life, <laughs> that's the biggest uh, contribution you could do on a daily basis. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, one of the common things that we also heard about a lot is carrying the water bottle. Yeah. Simple thing. I think once you start doing that, you're going to save a lot many water bottles over the year. Uh, yeah. And yeah. what is the message that you want to give to our audience? Ah, uh, I think I would, I would like to give a very humble request to everybody uh, watching this is be kind to people around you. Uh, and be kind to the people working in any kind of space, be it your house help, be it uh, your waste worker who comes to collect the waste, be it your security guard, be it your housekeeping team, be it your colleagues, friends, family. I think this world is too, uh, you have very little time in this world uh, to have uh, you know any kind of animosity or any kind of anger or, you know, uh, Try and be vindictive with people. I think try and live a happier life, peaceful life, healthier life. Um, and if being empathetic to people around you, especially the people who help you live your life daily, you know, your house help and your uh, uh, waste collectors. So I think that would be, I think, one way of contributing to your own uh, peace of mind. Awesome. Yeah. I think being kind is the seed from where it kind of starts uh, creating the larger impact so thanks for such a such a wonderful message for everyone thank you yeah we always used to wonder like me and ketu you know like okay we have our full time jobs like we uh, we know we want to do something about the waste we generate but somehow we are not like ourselves we also started composting somewhere last year but you know we did it for four months then again if you move out for a couple of days there is a problem and yeah. those things but now finally like talking to you and knowing in detail about Asir with Allah innovations it's like okay now we can professionally rely upon someone to kind of help us out with this thing and I'm pretty sure like a lot of other folks like us would also be interested in uh, such a support yeah and how would people in Bangalore contact you if they're interested so we have our helpline number 97421236 that people can reach out to. You can also visit our website uh, at uh, www.hashiudalainnovations.com and uh, send in an email. Our contact number is visible there. So just reach out to us. We are also present in Chennai and uh, Hyderabad. We recently expanded there and we're going to start services in Mumbai as well. So hoping to expand to other cities and try to reach out to more communities uh, and offer sustainable solutions where we are. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Marwan, for this wonderful time. I think Thank we you. have gained a lot of insights, but more than that, it has been inspiration for us. Because whenever we talk to founders like yours, I think it recharges our battery to you know, move further in our mission. Yeah. So, I, I think uh, these kind of conversations should happen on a larger scale. Yeah. Um, have it offline also to have that impact because sometimes our expressions on the camera, it's not necessarily understood. Yeah. And the impact is far uh, lower, but you know, in person uh, makes a huge impact. So yeah, you should reach out to people in your community, in your own city and try and see how you can engage and, or connect people um, you know, helping them reach out to a larger, uh, you know, beneficial yeah. base. Yeah. I think Shreyas is in Bangalore. Shreyas, you should. Yeah, yeah. I will definitely uh, visit and catch up with. Uh, yeah. My... We or... are in uh, Kasturba Road, very close to Kabul Park. So, okay. center of the awesome. city. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No, no, definitely I'll visit like 
from it, it's been a year in bangalore and it's it's just great to see so many people in this city like trying to tackle this uh, environmental issue which is much needed because it i it gives me so much pain every time i see it used to be like such a dense forest kind of a city and now okay we are in a which part of bangalore are you staying in i am in whitefield right now ah, yeah ah. whitefield is one of our uh, stronger community bases so we have a lot of clients that's it are you living in an apartment or uh... yeah i am in acme and core uh, society it's it's acme the iptl apartment. road i think you've ever seen that apartment they they do have composting inside which is a good thing i i like that like at least they are doing that much yeah. but i'll also check with them also like if they are catering to any such organization for the waste so yes i think every city needs it more flats more apartments it's like yeah. <laughs> we need a solution for that right. we have solutions for all kinds of bugs here <laughs> yeah i mean this is awesome Thanks, thanks a lot, Marwan, for giving us this time. We'll definitely uh, catch up in person also. Sure. I hope we can get more uh, idea and stories uh, in person. Yes, yes, But yes. yeah, of course, I'd be happy to share some more stories. Get more people to share more stories in this yep. place, and uh, you know, connect with as many people uh, as possible.